The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be up here speaking in Kingdom Life Church. Um, we had some, some really awesome messages on, on fear and how to deal with fear the last couple of weeks with my dad uh, speaking. One of the things he did mention that I, I wanted to reiterate was part of the DISC. And, and if, if you didn't know what the DISC was, the DISC is a temperament profiler. Uh, not necessarily a test, but an instrument or a tool to, to um, basically get you to know what your personality or your natural temperament is. Um, and we talked about how the fears are unique to each one of those personality types. And um, it's, it's funny, when, when I was studying for this, I was thinking to myself, because we're not just cut up into four different pieces and that's it, you know. We're, we're, we're mixtures of all of those up to like 16, so to speak, and and this and that. And that's just that one particular personality temperament profiler. There's so many that are available. Um, the Myers-Briggs, for instance, uh, the Enneagram, um, if you're familiar with that. But we have all these tools like um, Gary Chapman's The Love Languages, the five different love languages. Um, they teach us how to relate to others. Some of the data you can collect and, and, and put into a system and see where, you're, where you would be good at what job placement um, or even a spouse, what, what would be most compatible with you um, as far as finding a spouse. Um, of course, those are things that are all done in the natural that you can you could add up the ones and zeros and, and spit out a, you know, have a formula and spit out a, an answer because um, those are natural things. And even though you add God into it as far as like, um, well, your temperaments go, they all have weaknesses and fears is, is what... Um, we were talking about last week, each one of them, like the D is fear of losing or uh, fear of being taken advantage of. Um, the I, which is the talkative, uh, bubbly one, is fear of not being able to express themselves, being st stuffed or stifled, or um, rejection is a big one for them. Uh, the S temperament is a fear of change or loss of security. And the C is is usually fear of criticism. Those are like the main ones that the enemy tries to um, bombard your, them with. And without Jesus uh, and without the transforming power of forgiveness, um, those things will never really mature to a point where you can deal with them appropriately. So in reality, it's, it's a natural way of, of looking at our temperaments. But yes, we have to add God to it in order to mature in those. I was looking at these and I'm like, there's so many different things and, and, and ways that we could study ourselves. Self-actualization, I guess it would be called, um, to learn about ourselves, how we interact with others. We use a lot of the tools, even um, like the five love languages, the DISC, and, and some of the other things that are available out there in our counseling sessions, just so that we know, um, like Gwen and I know how to, how to speak to you and how you hear us. Um, on a one-to-one -one basis when we're, when we're in council. Um, so they're very valuable. But the one thing that I was, I was looking at, just like, you know, um, how varied and, and, and um, un awesomely unique he's created us. He's created us in a way that we can be varied and unique, speaking and loving others speaking to and, uh, you know, interacting with others, and also to himself. And I think that that's one of the things that those type of temperament tests and things, um, they don't really strengthen that, that um, spiritual side where you're, you know, where you're talking to God. You know, the scripture says that we love because he first loved us. But it also says that we need to love our neighbors as ourselves, right? 
Well, that second part of that verse is love our neighbors as ourselves. I under, we understand we have tons of tools, just like I said. We have all those, the love languages, the five love, which are awesome. Um, because you could speak in words of affirmation to somebody. Quali- you know, if quality time is their, you know, their love language or acts of service or gifts or um, you know, uh, physical touch. All those things are, are necessary in order to communicate love to that person and how that person would choose to communicate back. God, when I was looking through all these things and I'm like, there has to be a spiritual temperament instead of just these natural temperaments that we're looking at. I was like, there's a spiritual temperament or something similar to that 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 has to be out there. And what I found was, you know, that because what I was thinking was this, it, it can't be the end game. It can't be the only thing. It can't be just learning about each other and how we all work and, and all that because it's like you could use that as a parlor trick. You know, um, you could, you could kind of guess personality types after a while of studying it and you could manipulate conversations and people like that. And, and, and so that's all in the flesh. But like I said, I say they can't be the end game. There has to be a reason that God created us so different. Um, you know, the way I see things, in, fa- in fact, this kind of kind of a joke, but nobody, I don't know how many people know this, but I have grapheme color synesthesia. And I'm like, 1% of the population has it. Um, so I'm like, I feel honored, I guess. Um, to have this problem, gift, whatever it is, I don't know. But when I, when I see words or in my mind, if I, look at, if I see words, letters, or numbers in my mind, they all come out particular colors. So it's like a, a, a mixture of the senses, so to speak. But I'm like, you know, I look out at all of you guys, and I, and I, and I could, you know, if I visualize everybody's names, everybody's a different color. And everybody's, are, well, some people are the same, you know, because... The D's, the V's, and, you know, R's are all green. So anything that starts with D, V, and R, they're all green. But so if you, you know, fall into that category, I'm sorry, you're not, you're not uh, different. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's, it's it just, I've, of all those tools and all of these really cool ways to, to relate to others, um, that we have that are that are out there that help us develop, um, you know, an understanding of ourselves, which we need in order to actually love ourselves. Right? We need to know how God sees us and how He's created us, our real self. Right? Not the Mister Rogers self that He loves me the way that I am. God doesn't love us the way that we are. He wants us to. Keep, he wants us to keep growing and maturing and developing and getting closer to Him. Um, of course outside of the like I was talking about I mentioned before the outside of the scripture of John 3.16 one of the most important scriptures I think is when God when Jesus was speaking and he says what the two greatest commandments are when he was asked what the first one was well he was asked what the only one was and he gave two you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and this is in Matthew 22.37 through 39 You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is equally important, which you think it's just as equally important? Okay, well, he said it was. So, love your neighbor as yourself. I like how Mark Mark actually adds, Mark in Mark 20, verse 30 and 31, he adds, and all your strength. So love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Um, but love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. Like I said, it's, it's not really, it's not yourself the way that people say you are or the way that you think you are. It's yourself, the new creation self. You know, we don't want to love the self that we're, we're continually allowing to die, you know, um, in, our, in our Christian walk, Right. We want to not like that self at all. Um, we want to love our neighbor as ourself. And like I said, those tools are great for learning. 
you know, um, even the, the motivational gifts are great for learning um, about yourself and how you interact with others. And you can add God into the mix, but it's not directly to Him. You know, it's like for Him or with Him. But how do you develop that strength, strengthen that relationship up and down? That's so vital. So when I was looking on my search for spiritual temperaments, I, I, um, I came across a couple authors, and one, one of which had an entire book written, and, and it was called Pathways to God, or Pathways not to God, but Pathways, um, and, and it was Sacred Pathways. And what, the, what he showed was nine sacred pathways, and as soon as I said, you, you hear pathways, it's like it triggers me in thinking it's different ways to God. And that was like, ugh, because there's only one way, right? But what he was trying to explain is not just pathways, but to me, it was, it was ways on how people are created uniquely and how we speak and understand God, how we speak to and grow in God, and we are all different. Um, but I will get it, I'll get into that later. Again, the yourself in that little that scripture at the end of the scripture is not the Mister Rogers yourself. He is he is not okay with that. He wants you to be he wants you to be better and strengthen you. One of the things, the, the greatest things that we have um, in our arsenal, actually, is our testimony. And there's the, there's the short part of our testimony as far as a witness or a walking out of, okay? There's a long part. There's a short part is the, your, your testimony of your salvation and, and how that went and that you can, you can invite others to get saved, so to speak. Or even as your return to the Lord, if you were like a prodigal of some sort, like I was. Then there's the long. The long of the testimony is your walk or your, your, the witness of your walk here on earth around others. You know, the, you know the, the, sin, the, the old hymn, they'll know that we are Christians by our love, by our love. And they know we are Christians by our love. It's because of our, it would be because of what they're seeing. It's a walk that we have. We're walking it out, our Christian walk. Testimony is powerful. But the witness of our walk may be the most powerful part. The walk or the process of maturing as Christians with eyes fixed on coming into full stature. And you know what? He's given us everything to do that. He's already given us everything we need to walk that walk. And then I was brought to 2 Peter you know, 1, verse 3 and 4, in the Amplified. It says, For His divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are required and suited to life and godliness, which is walking out our Christian walk. Through the full, full and personal knowledge of Him who calls us, um, by his own glory and his excellence or virtue. For by these he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value, so that by them you may escape from the moral freedom that is in this world because of dis disruptible desire and become sharers in the divine nature. In the King James Version it says partakers in the divine nature. It's a little bit easier to read in the New Living Translation as we know Jesus better, which is developing our Christian walk. His divine power gives us everything we need for living a godly life. He has called us to receive his own glory and goodness. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. And these are promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. I kind of like that. But let's go back to the King James Version. Instead of sharers, it says partakers. And, when, and, and that's how I learned the scripture when I was in Bible school through the King James Version. 
And I always looked at it as partaking like you're, you're, you're eating at a table. You're partaking in food. It's all internal. It's all taking it in. When in reality, partakers is kind of like taking part or sharing it. Because his divine nature is an expression, right? So if we share in an expression, it would be similar to, I'll break it down, it would be similar to like partaking in a symphony. You're not in the audience, you're actually playing an instrument. You're taking part in creating that sound, that unique part of God's symphony, right? That's what partakers mean. And that's why that's so exciting. But then what do you think? What, what, what is his nature then? What are we taking part in? And what, is, what are we supposed to be expressing with him? And it's, it, it's always love. I mean, you could break it down into, into multiple sermons and messages and you can chart it out. And, 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 you know, but you have the, the basic concept is, is what Galatians 5, 22, the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against the, these, there, these, these there's, there's no law against those. The enemy can't touch that stuff because it's God's nature. It's love. When I was looking at this, I saw that there's there's three divisions of, of those fruits. There's the first part where God was showing me. In, in actually, in, in all of the study, I'm looking for a spiritual temperament, or I should be looking for more of the the God love languages. Love languages were given, uh, you know, words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, physical touch. But with God, you know, we didn't create our we didn't create our spouses, so it's a little bit different. God's love languages are slightly different. What what's cool about Him is He created us, and He gave us a particular love language, so that we could reciprocate. Right? He loved us first. But we can love him and strengthen in, you know, in, that, in that relationship uniquely by how we relate to him. And he created us that way and expects it that, from him. He expects it from you because he created you for a specific, unique purpose. To love God and love others. Right? The three divisions I've, I've, I've seen are pretty neat. The three divisions of the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, and joy. And to me, when I saw that, I right away saw it's kingdom. That's God himself. That's, that's, that's the internal, inward work and application of God's presence in my life. Love, or of course, righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness is love. Righteousness is the action of agape love in you. The next set is long suffering or patience, kindness and goodness. And these are the part of God's presence that others see when they look at you, yourself. The third set is faithfulness, gentleness or meekness and self-control. And this is God's presence in your acts towards others. So it's basically God's self and others. But what I like about the first set is that it's, it's kingdom. He made, he made the... As I was studying this, I, I, I came upon an author, an author that um, really gave me some insight into to what God was trying to, what well, God uses in his given us in order to um, temper, so to speak, uh, the, the gifts of the Spirit. And if you, if you are um, somebody that, that really works in some of the, the gifts of the Spirit, like word of wisdom, word of knowledge, um, 
discerning of spirits, and so on, the fruit of the Spirit actually were given to temper that and to mature them. And he gave each one, and he gave insight on each one and how, how it all is like part of God's plan to mature those particular portions of what he's given in order to be the, the best impact and um, have it be in a godly way. Because without God, you, the, the gifts still work, correct? There's no repentance for the gifts. But with God, they are, they are actually, and surrendered to him, they're actually matured and allowed to grow, and, and you actually are in place where God wants you to be as far as what you're gifting, where your gifting took you. But you have to be mature in that. There's the revelation gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and the uh, divine, uh, discerning of spirits. There's the gifts of inspiration, which are prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. But then there's the power gifts, the gifts of faith, and the gifts of healings, and the working of miracles. Can you see where, I mean, we don't have like a, a large group of, of people out there that are raising the dead right now. It, it seems to be few and far between, but if, if, if you, can you see if there was a lot or prophecy, sometimes people in the prophetic can fall into easily into a prideful, because they know things that, 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 that the, you know, the spirit supernatural, from the supernatural world, um, you would need meekness in order to counterbalance, you know, um, the, the, the word of wisdom would need self-control because if you had a word of wisdom and you, and you knew what they were supposed to do, but God didn't want you to say it. They wanted, he wanted you to know so that you can pray for them and they can work it out. You have to have self-control. Um, the gifts of healing, I saw as kindness and compassion. And that's, all of those things are, are, are Jesus. But when I was reading and I was looking and, and I was like, you know what? I was looking at, he, and he had one for one, each one. And, and I was like, something doesn't sit right. It doesn't feel complete, so to speak. And, I was, and so I was looking at him and, well, he left out joy altogether. And you know what? What's funny about love, peace, and joy at the, at the first part of, of that scripture, of the fruit of the Spirit it never changes in any translation of, that I've seen. Those, those first three that are kingdom principle, they're, they're kingdom. They never change. And he left out joy. And he put in long suffering twice. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't think this is going to work for me. But it, made me it, but it made me pray about it and, and, and really seek the Lord as to... to what it really was all about. And what it really is all about is spiritual temperament. What it really all is all about is, is, is the fruit of the Spirit interacting with us in the way that God created us and how we can express that, right, eventually. The thing is, is all of those one for one things that were written down by that particular author. Most all of the fruit of the Spirit have to be working in almost all of each of those individual giftings in order for them to really work. You could see the, 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 where he was trying to tie it in, um, but in reality, love, peace, joy, righteousness, peace, and joy, love, peace, joy, long suffering, all of those goodness, faithfulness. All of those things have to be active in all your gifting because that's, that's God's way that he shows his love. And why would you want to do or say or be or raise somebody from the dead if you didn't have love? Paul says it pretty, pretty clear that way too. Without love, what is there without God? So how do you love God? How do you feel his presence? There, you know, there's many unique ways that we can connect to God and develop and strengthen our relationship with Him. We're, many. But the way that He designed us, that unique way, um, 
He expects us to love him back in that same way. That's where his love languages are. Now, Gary Thomas was the author that I, 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 I read that actually shows nine spiritual temperaments. And I'm not going to go into all of them because I, I, I'm still processing a lot of them. But that would be like a whole other teaching, just like any of these lists would be a whole series of teachings, you know. Um, but he, he saw a breakdown over time since the, the beginning of the church that there were, and also the way that Jesus is, is um, Jesus actually is, a, is part of all of these things as well. There are naturalists, there are traditionalists, There are sensates, ascetics, activists, caregivers, enthusiasts, contemplatives, and intellectuals. And I don't expect you to write all those down because I can barely say all of them. But I can understand where he's coming from in a way. But every, every, every type of temperament, even, even here where he lists the way that a lot of people um, feel more connected to the Lord um, and developing their relationship with Him, it still has, uh, and, and an, a, a certain amount has to, you have to mature in it. Otherwise, it can be taken to a totally human, humanistic level, right? The naturalist, let me be outdoors. I want to see the majestic mountains. I want to praise His name from the top. I want to, you know, I want to, I feel his presence in nature. And I just, and that's where my best, some of my best revelations come from, is when I'm, when I'm out looking at his creation. Okay, well you can, you, that's, that's good, and there's a redeemed side, and there's, a, you know, an unredeemed, you know, unredemptive side to all of these. And like I said, they all need matured. So you can fall into different traps. For each one of these things. The sense it is let me experience. They're, they're, um, they're wanting the, the, the big cathedrals and the, and the paintings and the, and the things to, to really get them going as far as, as far as like stir them up in the spirit. Some of these I don't understand myself and I have to tolerate um, based on <laughs> my personality type. Like, like, I have a hard time working with the D temperament for the most part um, because I'm a C temperament and we're, we're, we're naturally against each other. Uh, we're, one is a doer with facts, or without facts, and one is a, just hold off and wait for all the facts. Well, anyway, so some of these will, will not be my favorite either. There's a traditionalist, which is let me remember, let me, let me honor God in memory of him so it's those are the ones that that take like the holidays and really not just enjoy the holiday because it's it's good great for the kids and there's presents going around or whatever but they enjoy the holiday because they're honoring they they they, they can't wait to honor and and remember god in those ways the the ascetics are a s c e t i c they're, let me be alone. I want to be alone with God. I, the, my best time is in my prayer closet. And in fact, most of the church has been taught over the years that you need, all need, uh, you know, an, uh, an hour-long prayer time. You need some devotions. You need some reading. You need some, you know, you need to come to church every Sunday and read. But honestly, that is, if, that, if that's all that you have, that's not enough. You need to develop, you need to figure out which one of these that you are. You need to figure out which of the, the fruit of the Spirit that you're not expressing and, and ask the Lord to develop it in you on a daily basis. This is a relationship. I don't just show up at home once a week and, because I'm married. And on the seven, you know, six days out of the week, I don't feel like being there. There's the activist, which I know that, that my wife is. For, she's an SC temperament, which is usually the back... You know, they, they sit in the back. They, they don't like to rock the boat. They, they gather the information, but they don't really, you know, they're not gung-ho. But her, 
her, her, her spiritual temperament as an activist would be the one that is demanding justice, that is out on the road, standing in the rain until they see the evils conquered. And that's my wife. She's cool. There's the caregiver. So many of us in our church are caregivers. But it's let me care. It's the one that, that has compassion for those that, that automatically feel God's presence. And, and I understand God's presence when, when compassion flowed out of him. That's like one of my favorite scriptures. Those are the caregivers. When he saw life flow out of him, did I say compassion? He had compassion, and that's why he healed. There's the enthusiast, which is um, more like my, my daughter, Haven, <laughs> or Sid Roth. They're the, the go-getters. They're extremely excited about everything that God's going to do. They're determined that they know that God's going to do something new and exciting at every, every day when they wake up. God's going to do something new and exciting, and I'm going to be a part of it. And, and that's my daughter, <laughs> which is great. But, they're, but that's the enthusiast, right? They're, and they're generally very good at um, round, you know, rounding up people for the Lord. There's the contemplative, and that's where most of the, our church falls into, and that's a lot of how we teach um, the connection when we, when, we, when we drop down or we put on. That's like contemplative prayer. We do the 60-day challenge. It's really close to contemplative prayer. But contemplatives are let me feel, let me touch. I want to touch your presence. I want to, I want to feel the anointing. I want to feel your presence. So they do everything. They study everything to, to, that, that, that helps them and able to do that. And then there's the intellectuals, which... That's another one that I have a hard time with because it's like I don't understand how an intellectual that's always up in their head can really grasp the concept of, of in, that internal work down here, that connection with God. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't get it. However, if I look at it this way and you look at the intellectual as they're grabbing every resource and book that they could find because they know that there's more of God. And I'm not looking for God outside of the scriptures because I already know my God. But I, I want to know I want to know more. I want to I know there's more. I know there's there's other levels and 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 I can and I'm totally excited that there's so many things that just keep revelation just keeps popping up about him. And 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 so there's the intellectuals. They, they, you know, without the intellectuals, we couldn't say, love the Lord your God with all your mind. What does that mean? A total surrender of your mind to, to him, right? But it's the, 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 the new creation mind, the, the, one that sur- the one that surrendered to him. <laughs> so we have to have them. Not that I want to get rid of them. I need them too. Actually, I'm... I'm kind of that way too. But we're all parts, pieces and parts of those things. But like I said, the whole um, outline or the whole basic principle in this, in this entire thing that I found was no matter what you're labeled or what you feel God is um, most present in your life while you're doing whatever thing, whether you're reading or whether you're out in nature or whether you're singing or whether you're dancing, some people feel really connected with the Lord when they dance. And they do it in their, at home, alone, by themselves, or whatever, right? Um, whatever those unique things are, develop them. Just keep going. And if there's any that were sounded interesting, look into them and see if there's anything, you know. God speaks to us in a multitude of different ways. And if, if we would just listen, we would hear. What's, I always thought it was interesting, like I said, the, the, the uniqueness that he has given us. But God wants, going back, God wants your love according to the way that he created you. Your worship may look different than the person next to you or the pastor 
or the leader of your home group. But that uniqueness is what God wants and he looks for as you mature in him. God is always calling us to a deeper level of relationship. A more mature walk with him and expressing him as well. I know those of us that some of us don't think that there are any deeper levels or what's the reason for that when everybody else is, I mean, everybody's just so screwed up and I've been hurt in the church and I just want to be by myself. You know, there, there's so much more and, and it's so good. The depth of God is, is just ridiculous. If you have a scripture that you have, um, a life scripture, something that you've written down and over the years you've kept in your Bible and you memorized it and that's just part of one of the things that God's given you. Do you know there's, there's so much depth to as you mature that he can reveal to you even in those little life scriptures that mean so much when you're just born again or what have you till now? There's so much revelation and in, in things that, that he can give you connecting the dots and making things right in your life just by allowing him to go, you know, strengthen that relationship with you. You could always stop at salvation and say, hey, that's, that's it. This Christian life is just too hard. I mean, I go to Kingdom Life Church and they just ask too much of me. They're just like too holy or something. I can't do that. I can't be that way. I can't be that strong of a Christian or whatever. All you, that's all for you guys that you can do it. But I, I just can't. Let's, and, and people do have attitudes. People do have that attitude. That, like I said, especially the ones that have been disillusioned by uh, circumstances that happened in the church or from people that were in the church or from a different pastor or, you know, they were hurt. Let's, I'll tell you a story. This is hypothetical. It's not real. I'm going to say it's a story of two gardens. I say, suppose Pastor Cliff and Steen are over there. They're in a competition with me to create this awesome garden. Now, each of us plant the same garden as far as the amount of, and, and everything. Each of us was given the same space, the tools, the seeds. Again, we were all given the tools and supplies that we need to accomplish a great mature garden. Hint, hint. We were given everything we need to live a godly life. Cliff and Stina consult tutorials on gardening. And they also invite guidance from their neighbors. They were successful in their endeavors, you know, because, you know, if, if somebody else was really successful, you want to know how, how they succeeded, right? So they invite their neighbors' opinions in as, as well as, you know, watching their online videos of people gardening and what have you. And both of them work diligently putting nets around items so that the birds might, you know, not come down and eat the desirable things that were growing or placing posts in the dirt for the vines and vegetables that may you know, grow tall and not fall over. Place cages around their tomatoes so that they can grow heavy without falling to the ground. And of course, often you could see them outside, and Stina and Cliff both were diligent in watering and, and when needed, removing weeds and fending off unruly pests to the best of their ability. And then there's me. I simply go out and plant. I didn't till the ground, I didn't get the rocks out, I didn't bother. I was like, this is too hard anyway, right? I'm gonna, I got all the stuff I need. And then I wait several months. Months later, after that, we all head out to our gardens to begin the harvest. Of course, then I go out and find to my, you know, my tomatoes and my beans and everything are rotten all over the ground. The vines from the green beans are choking out other plants. There's a tons of weeds everywhere and half of them have been eaten by rabbits and squirrels and whatever else is out there 
in my jungle. So I end up grabbing a handful of what's left. And I decide in my own experience by myself that gardening is absolutely worthless. And the grocery store is like way more convenient. In fact, now they deliver to us. You know, we're for a small fee. So, I mean, gosh, why bother? <laughs> However, Cliff and Stina actually had to ask their neighbors for help to gather all their bounty in their, harbor, in their harvest that they had. Baskets full of vegetables in which they calculated 15 to 20% of their savings on their groceries for that summer. They even had enough to save for winter. And enough to actually share and bless others around them with. All of us planted, but not all of us tended. I could, have, I could stop easily at saying, you know, in my opinion, I'm going to just stay home and be by myself. I'm going to call in an order instead of planting this garden and tending to it in my Christian walk. All of us had access to all the help and all the tools that we needed, including the community of faith. But I chose to be alone. I chose to be me and God only and use that approach. came up with my own opinion, didn't have the community of faith to bounce it off of to see if I was actually thinking straight or not. Of course, you know, can't trust those people in the church, they hurt me. What I learned, though, is throughout this study, is that God is all calling us to a deeper level of relationship with Him. And more importantly, this always involves Transforming of self as a testimony and includes others in the household of faith to help. Tending our gardens is, is like walking it out. You know, we, we, we are given everything that we need to walk a godly walk. Allow the internal work or transmi- transformation. God's kingdom, love, peace, and joy, allow God to develop that personal testimony. There's part of our tes- my testimony when I, when I talk about it now, and it looks ba- I look back and it looks like such a, a horror movie that I watched one time on TV. But I smile when I think about it. I'm not weird, <laughs> but it's because of the joy that that real transformation that takes place in a testimony when you've gone through something and God took you out and has built you up, there's joy. Joy comes out of it. <laughs> joy comes out of it. We, we have to work on that internal work, righteousness, peace, and joy, allowing those things to work in our lives. The external, that's what people see when we're looking, they're looking at us. What do you emanate? Is it righteousness, peace, and joy? Is it any of the other fruit of the Spirit? What do, you, what do you emanate? And finally, how you treat and work with others. How's your walk around others? This always involves a commitment or an effort, and by the grace of God on our part, to mature in His nature. And His nature is what? The fruit of the Spirit is love. I want to challenge you this week to really dive into prayer time. In your prayer time, ask the Lord what His love languages are for you. What, What His love languages... It could look totally different than what he expects you to love your spouse with or how you feel 
like I'm, I'm physical touch, quality time. It could be the same thing. What if God says, I just want some quality time with you. And you're not giving it to me. <laughs> Why don't you try? Or if your love language is, is, is being outdoors, spend a few more hours outside if you can. I mean, if you have it available. God understands when we're, when we're busy, but he, he also under, he knows us better than we do. And he knows our time. And he will make time if you allow him. It's one of those things where people say, well, I don't, I don't have so much time to do the 60-day challenge. You don't have 15 minutes that you can honor him. Uh, that's, that's um, eh, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 15 minutes a day out of 24 hours? Nah. That's like when, they, when the cleaning people were coming here and they, do, do they have to be here? Exactly. I mean, we only have service an hour and a half a week here at the building. Do they have to be here exactly only for that half hour that we're here? <laughs> but in reality, it's the, the experience of knowing God, loving each other, showing each other the fruit of the Spirit, having the fruit of the Spirit be developed in you, to temper any of the areas that he needs to temper, to, to express himself as his goal. He wants you to be able to express kingdom on earth through you, right? Righteousness, peace, and joy. He wants all that out of you and to be an expression of him. Lord, help us not to stop growing at merely our salvation experience and lead us back to you if we have strayed. Help us to walk out our salvation. Help us to mature in you, to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, expressing them in every area and allowing your kingdom be shown on earth here and now through us as you see fit. Amen. I think that one of the things that were so powerful as far as when I was talking about how God works in our lives, our testimony, our testimonies are, are some of the, this is the biggest thing. When, I, when we're walking and we're in front of people, we should be walking the way that God is, is, is walking it out as he's healed us, walking out that healing. You know, um, if, if anybody doesn't have our Gwen and I's testimony, I'll um, reach out to Jason at forgive123.com and I'll try to hook you up um, with being able to listen to it at least. But the walking out is just, like I said, it's not just your salvation experience, like how I came to know Jesus. And, and that's an important start. And like the, even, even the study of the disc and the, and the other ways, of the temperament profiles, the Enneagram, and all these different things, that's just the start. It's like the tip of the iceberg of understanding yourself. In order for you to be able to love yourself, you, you, we, we want to know how God made you. But then you, and then you grow in those things, and you, and you receive forgiveness for all the, the silly things that that does, and you, you grow and you mature in all the different areas, the, the, the different unique ways that God's created, and but then what? It's the, the gradual and walking it out, the gradual realization that all of it is the fruit of the Spirit. He's given us everything that we need. And the fruit of the Spirit is one of the biggest things that He's given. <laughs> Let's allow it to, to really control us and, and, and move us. You know, we want to be moved with compassion. We want to be... We want to be you know, full of joy, because joy is what? Our strength. We need those, we, we desperately need to be able to tap in in our prayer time to the righteousness, peace, and joy. Love, peace, and joy. We want to we wanna pray, like I was praying when I, I wasn't feeling real good and I hadn't put my back out and I was having migraines through this, the whole study of this for like, 
gosh, it was like two weeks straight, I think. And, you know, I was like, I know that God doesn't want me to be in pain. He doesn't want sickness. He doesn't, he doesn't, all of that stuff is from the enemy. But while I'm here, I'm going to say, God, I just want, I just want you. I want the, the, that presence, that ultimate peace. And I'm just going to pay attention to you instead of this head that's throbbing and trying to steal away my attention. You know, there's so many different things that, that, the, that the enemy comes at us with to pull us out of his spirit, to pull, of, pull us out of his connect, that connection that we have in him. Don't let it happen. When you see it happen, immediately go back. I receive forgiveness, Lord. I want you. I don't care what they just, that, that person just said to me. It hurt. I received forgiveness for taking in that pain. I want you. And I just was praying during this time when I had those headaches, and I was just like, every time that I, every time that I prayed and I, and I purposely was like, I really just want to focus on you and your spirit, Father. Speak to me, Lord. And I just did it over and over again, laying there in bed, because I had the ice pack on my head. Ice pack or eating bad, both. Until the headache would go away. It would start going away. It was still there. I mean, if I went and thought about it and focused on it, I would have been... I was literally crying at this point, because sometimes the, the headache was so strong. But when I would drop down, it would go away. Like, hmm. And then you drop down further. It's kind of like, well, Dad explains it like the, like the floor drop out, right? Well, you, you, at some point in prayer, when you when you when you start letting the floor drop out, so to speak, I was I felt it like going out of my feet. I'm praying out of my feet, right? I'm, I'm my feet shouted with peace, right? Yeah. So I got peace until until I hit what the next level for me was joy. And the thing was, is no matter what, we are, as Christians, allowed to tap into that joy at any time. Do we do it? No. <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> because why? Because we have so much flesh going on that is continually pulling at us in different directions that we, we forget that it's just, it's just, it's there, it's just there. It's already there. It's kind of like digging for oil but not going through all the way to, to where it breaks through. But once you do, it, the pressure of it, right? It's, it's exactly like that. It's, I don't know where that is in Scripture, <laughs> but it seems to be in my own personal prayer time. That's what happens. And I want to invite you to be able to do that as well. We are supposed to be experiencing kingdom in us, Right? And that is righteousness, peace, and joy. So let's, let's do that in our prayer time. Allow, allow us to, to, to go past the peace even and, and, and hit that joy bubble and allow it to, to spring up. Those are, there, there, there's other things that spring up, the foul others, you know, the, the bitter roots things. Let's, let's get the joy instead. <laughs> Amen? We, we don't need it. and We don't need our circumstances to change in order for us to be happy. That, that's not necessary. We should be able to tap into the joy where we're at, no matter what it is, whether you're sick at home or you have, you know, like I had a migraine for so long or, or whatever it is that the excuse is that, that, that keeps you from, from really tapping into that. It, 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 it's not necessary. And if you look, you will find him. If you seek with all your heart, he loved the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and strength. That means surrender it all to Him. And that's the way He wants us to live in. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, 
please visit forgive123.com.